Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Morning. Good morning. It is good afternoon. <laughs> afternoon. Hey, good. good afternoon, ma'am. Oh. How are you guys doing? Mm. Yeah, we are cool. We are great. Come on. We are cool, ma'am. We are great. Sorry, I thought I was on mute. <laughs> Okay. Yes, welcome to your session. Uh, today we'll be giving sampling distribution. If you have any question or query, now is the time to ask any question or comment. Uh, Okay. What we previously did or regarding the modules, anything. Yeah, assignment two. How oh, Jesus. Mm -mm. What's wrong with assignment two? Are you struggling? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm struggling this. I really yeah. struggle. I'm really struggling. But I'm gonna do my second attempt tonight. Okay. Did did you at least watch the the recordings and did you do the activities and practice? I've tried, but uh, after to after tonight, I will communicate with you okay. after my second attempt. Okay. Thank Why you so much. are you speaking after the second attempt? Why can't you communicate with us now uh, during the day while you are still preparing to do your second attempt? So that when you go and do your second attempt, you are sure of what you're going to be doing there. If they, in terms of the activities that we did previously, if you are unable to enter those activities on your own, then it means you need to ask for help so that we can help you understand how to answer those activities because if you don't know how to answer the activity you won't know how to answer the assignment questions as well so practice now with the activities ask questions if you're still stuck let's help you and then you go into your assignment Okay, thank you, Liz. I think on assignment two, I was not prepared enough, and then the time was running out for me. Now, that's why I said, let me just uh, go through the other activities, and then after my second uh, attempt, I will shout for help. Okay. I'm still playing myself, yes, because assignment one was number one. Assignment two, I didn't practice much. Okay. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> I think I had the same problem with assignment too. Um, when it comes to the theory questions, uh, that, 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 that got, caught me a bit off guard. And then there were some sections in, in assignment two where I could like fly through because I know how to do the calculations and then, then it goes back to theory questions and then I'm completely lost again. So, oh. so it's, it's, it's also just a, a matter of Watching the videos again. That's why I asked you, you guys now the other day what 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 videos all covered assignment two. So I'm busy rewatching all those videos and doing the activities so that I can do my second attempt. Okay. Yes. And then also I, I get confused with the tables sometimes, but it's, yeah, I just I need to focus on the tables. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, especially with the binomial tables, and um, you need to be very careful when you use your binomial table as well, in terms of what probability of success they have given you, whether you must use the left-hand side or you must use the right-hand side, based on the, the, the probability that they gave. Yeah, but I, I, I believe in if you practice a lot and you do more activities, you might master uh, the chapters as well. <laughs> do not rush to do the assignment without understanding 
the concept as well as knowing how to do the calculations. Okay, so let's do sampling distribution. So the last time we met, we discussed normal distribution and the same concepts we learned in the normal distribution, we're going to continue with them today. Uh, with normal distribution, we're only looking at one population. With sampling distribution, we look at multiple samples that comes from that one uh, population as well. We're going to be learning how to use the same table, the normal standardized, uh, cumulative standardized normal distribution table that you, you we used in the normal distribution. We're going to learn how to still do the calculation for the z-score to standardize the the means um, <clears throat> and then using the z-score value to go find the probability on the table. So we're still just going to do the same thing that you have learned. So let's get to it. So by the end of the session today, you should learn the concept of sampling distribution. You should also be able to calculate the probabilities relating to the sampled mean or calculate the probability relating to the sample proportion. And the sample proportion is another avenue that we are introducing. You, you've learned how to calculate the z-score using the, the standard, uh, the normal uh, z-score, which will look almost exactly the same as when we're calculating for the sample mean. But we're going to introduce the sample proportion z-score formula as well today. So. When we talk about sampling distribution, like I said, with normal distribution, we only look at one population and we estimate or we approximate the observations that we get from there in order to standardize them into a normal distribution. With sampling distribution, it's a distribution of all possible values of a sample statistics given for a given sample size selected from a population. So like I said, in sampling distribution, we're going to use samples selected from that one sample. So instead of using one population, we're going to use multiple samples, but selected from the same population. So like example is the one that you see on the, on the, uh, on the slide. We've got three different samples that we selected from this population. And when we uh, calculate the average of those distribution, you can see that the distribution might also be, they might look almost exactly the same, but they might be different in terms of how we selected the, uh, the people that are represented in the sample. And you can see that the, uh, the, the mean distribution or the distribution of all the three samples, you can see that they are not actually normally distributed. So with sampling distribution, we're going to take all these sample means and we're going to make sure that we convert them into a normal distribution. So we will take all the samples average or sample means and standardize them in order for them to be in a not in order or to convert them to be normal normally distributed. Okay. So when we talk about the uh, sampling distribution measures, like parameters for the sampling distribution. So from a normal distribution, we know that we have a population and we can calculate the mean of that population and we can calculate the, the standard deviation of that population. And if we do that, for example, if this is our population and it has the values 18, 20, 24, we can see that our distribution will be a uniform distribution. This is not a normally distributed distribution, it's a uniform distribution. So we can take this uniform distribution and convert it to a standardized normal distribution by resampling from this same population, multiple samples, and then use those multiple samples to standardize 
the distribution. And when we do that, then it means we are doing what we call a sampling distribution. And when we select multiple means from those samples, and we calculate the, 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 the means of those samples, we get that the population mean of that sampling distribution or the, the sample sizes, all, all of them, the, the mean, the average mean of those gives us 21. And when we calculate the standard deviation of those, we find that it will give us 1.52, uh, 5.8. If you look at, if we only had one population, you will notice that we had the mean of 21 and we had the standard deviation of 2.2 .2 from that, from this data set. So if we selected four other samples out of this, so resampling, the values from this population, we get the sampling the sampling mean or the mean of the sampling distribution of 21, which is the same as the mean of the population. And we find the standard deviation of the sampling distribution to be 1.5, which is or 1.6, which is less than the uh, population standard deviation. You will notice that we divide each one of them by 16 because we selected four samples. So they were four times four times, uh, sorry, four plus four plus four plus four is 16. Um, so that would have been our sample sizes, even though we selected only two uh, samples. But in each sample, there were four observations from the normal distribution. So it makes it 16. So in a nutshell, what we saying is, when we have a population with uh, the size of four, and we calculate the mean of that population, we get 21 as the mean and the standard deviation of 2.2. .2. If we resample and we take two samples from this, from this population of the four uh, individual values from that sample, uh, from that population as it is, but we sample it twice. We calculate the mean of those samples. We find that the mean is 21, and we find that the standard deviation is 1.58. As you can see, we were able to transform a uniform distribution and make it a normal distribution. With the sampling distribution of the mean, if we compare it with the population, we can see that clearly the mean of a population is the same as the mean of the sampling distribution. But the standard deviation of a pop of the population standard deviation is not the same as the standard deviation of a sampling distribution and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is, is also called the standard error and we're going to learn about that just now <clears throat> so what we have learned so far is different sample of the same size from the same population will yield the same sample, oh sorry, it will yield the different sample means. And also we've learned that a measure of variability in the mean from the sample to the sample is given by the standard deviation of the sampling distribution or what we call the standard error of the mean. So standard error is the same Standard error is also the same as the standard deviation of sampling distribution and it's also denoted by sigma x bar because we're talking about the sample mean so it will be your sigma x bar 
which is your population standard deviation divided by the square root of your sample size. And that is what we call the standard error or the standard deviation of a sampling distribution or the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And you will need to know this and remember this because in the exam or in your assignment, they might be asking questions regarding uh, theory, theory questions, and you need to know how to answer that question as well. That the standard error is the same as the standard deviation of a sampling distribution is the same as your population standard deviation divided by the square root of your n. Other thing you need to note is your standard error will decrease when the sample size increases. So the bigger the sample size, the smaller your standard error will be. Because we are dividing the population standard deviation with the sample size. So if I divide two by eight, the value will be less. If I divide two by 20, it will even be way lesser. So you need to remember that. That when you increase the value of your sample size, the value of your standard, degree, standard deviation or standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the mean or the standard error will be small. Let's wrap up what we've learned so far. We've learned that the mean of your sampling distribution for the mean is the same as your population mean. We also learned that the standard error, which is our standard deviation of our sampling distribution of mean, is the same or it equals to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Let's do an example to see if we learned anything from that. Suppose a population has the mean of eight and the standard deviation of three. Suppose a random sample size of n is equal to 36 is selected. Calculate the mean of a sampling distribution. What they are asking you to find is the mean of a sampling distribution. What is the mean of the sampling distribution based on the values that we have? That is your question. Am I alone here? Hello? You are not alone. You are not alone, Lizzie. Okay. Here is the question. What is the mean of a sampling distribution? Anyone? Eight. It's equals to eight because eight. the mean of sampling distribution is the same as the mean of the population. Is the same as the mean of a population, which is equals to eight. What is the sampling, uh, the standard deviation of a sampling distribution, or what is the standard error? Three. 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 Mm -hmm. The standard error will be your population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. What is your population standard deviation? Is three. What is your sample size square root of 
36. Therefore, this will be 3 divided by 6, which is equals to, you can use your calculator and calculate it, which is 1 over 2, which is 0, 0,5. And that is your standard error. Questions? If there are no questions, then we move on. Similar to what we do when we calculate the normal distribution, we need to standardize the values or the, the, the X values or the unit in terms of using the Z score or the Z value calculation. With the sampling distribution, we also used the Z value to find the standardized value in order for us to be able to go find the probability on the table. In the normal distribution, our Z score was our X observation minus the mean divided by the population standard deviation. And that is what we use in chapter, oh, let's say study unit six. In study unit six. In study unit seven, we use the sample means. Instead of using the X, we're going to use the mean. So we're going to say it is the mean, sample mean minus. We're also not going to refer to the population mean, but we're going to refer to it as the mean of the sampling distribution because we're using the means divide by the standard error, which we know for sure it is your standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So this formula is to standardize our sample means in order for us to be able to use the standardized unit to go find the probability on the table. And the formula we can write it as your mean bar minus your mean because we know that the population mean is the same as the mean of a sampling distribution. So we can just write x bar minus mu divided by the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Let's look at an example. Suppose the population has the mean of 8 and the standard deviation of 3. Suppose a random sample size of n is equal to 36 is selected. What is the probability that the sample mean is between 7.8 and 8.2? Same. We know we want to calculate the probability. And here we have the sample mean, but it lies between. Remember, we don't have to worry about the greater than or equal or less than or equal because we know we're using the uh, cumulative standardized normal distribution. So this will be 7.8, and this side will be 8.2, and that is what we need to be calculating. So to calculate this probability, we need to standardize the mean distribution. And standardizing the mean distribution, it means we're going to use the formula, our mean bar minus the mean divided by the standard error, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Which then change to the z because we are standardizing the mean bar minus the mean divided by standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Substituting the values in terms of what we are given. We are given the mean, we are given the n, we are given the standard deviation, and we are given the sample mean in terms of the question. So our sample mean for the first one will be 7.8 minus our population mean of 8 divided by our standard error, which is 
3 divided by the square root of 36. Same this side, our sample mean is 8.2 minus our mean of 8 divided by our standard error, which is 3 divided by the square root of 36. So now we can calculate the side. We know the bottom part because we did calculate the sample standard uh, sampling sampling distribution uh, standard deviation, and we did calculate it. We said it's uh, sorry. We said it was three divided by the square root of thirty six, and we found that it was zero point five. Remember when we were doing the activity, found that it was zero point five. So therefore, this will be the probability of 7.8 minus 8 will be 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.5. You can just double check my values. And minus, Miss Liz, minus 0 0.2. Yes, minus 0 0.2. And then this 8.2 minus 8. It's 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.5. And therefore, the probability that we need to find will be uh, 0 0.2 minus 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.5. What do you get? Uh, do the calculation for me. Minus 0, 0.4. 0 0.4 and I'm going to put 0 there because we always need to leave our values into two decimals greater than z greater than and therefore this side will be 0 0.40 as well 0 0.5 so now we have the probability of between and since this is the probability of between we needs to say this will be the probability that z of the oh sorry why am i dividing by 0 0.5 again here we say zero we will find the probability on the table for 0 0.40 minus the probability we find on the table for z less than minus 0. 4 z minus 0 0.40 so we're going to go to the table so let's go to the table let's keep everything that we have go to the table we're looking for two values the first value we're looking for it's on the positive side of the table We'll be looking for that 0 0.40 at the top. So we find that that is 0 0.0554. I ran out of space, so I'm going to write it here. 0 0.6554, and then we're going to subtract. Go and find minus 0 0.4 on the table. So we go to the negative side of the table and go look for 0 minus 0. And I know that this column is 0, 0 at the top. Therefore, that will be. So you can scroll up and you will see that that is 0, 0. And then you come down to that column and we get 0. 4, uh, 0 0.3446, 0 0.3446 minus 0 0.3446. And if you do the calculation, what do you get? Um, Miss Liz, can I ask a question before you continue? Yes. Why are we using zero? And where does the minus for both of them? Why do we subtract 
instead of adding what is the reason for it um let me take it back remember when we use the normal distribution table the probability of z less than a value it will be the value we find on the table remember that ne? yes I do. yeah and when we have the probability of z greater than a value we say one minus the value we find on the table oh okay yeah that i remember thank you so much for that right. then for the probability of between if it lies between a and b we say we take the probability of the second value which is z less than b and we subtract the probability of the first value which will be z less than a and it's the same. So the value of table value of B minus the table value of A. That's what we're doing. And because it was in between, we take the table value of B, which this side will be B. This is A and this is B. So we take the table value of B Table value of B, which is the probability we're going to find for B. Subtract the value we will find for the table value for A, which is minus 0 0.4. So what do you get when you calculate? Okay, since you guys, you don't want to talk to me, let it's me just... 0 0.3108. 0 0.3108. And you can see that we took the population distribution that we had. We converted it into a sampling distribution, and then we went and found the probability of that normal distribution, which now it is standardized. Um, Miss Liz, going back to the table, can you please go to the table? Why do we use the first column zero? Is it always going to be zero if it's in no. Uh, you asked the question why we using. So the answer, the question, the Z score actually was 0, 0,40. Remember the yes. first digit, the one before comma and the one after comma, we always find it. Oh, um, yes. The, the second one is that. Oh, yeah. The, the last you. digit, we find it at the top. So at the top, that is why you always need to leave your answer at two decimals. Oops, oops, oops. So that is why you need to always leave your answer into two decimals so that the last digit, the last digit, the last digit will tell you in which column you need to be at. The first two digits, the one before the comma and the one after the comma will tell you which row you need to be at. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Lev. No worries. Let's do an exercise. This is your exercise to do. A sample of N16 observation is drawn from a normal population with the mean of 1,000 and a population standard deviation of 200. Calculate the probability that the sample mean is less than 1,050. Remember the formula for Z? Z is the, the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error. The sample mean you are given in the question the standard deviation, the N, and the mean are in the statement. 
you have five minutes and your time starts now. Remember, when you have your answer, you can post it on the chat. Are we winning? Yes, Mrs. Hi, Lizzie. Yeah. I'm unable to type on the chat. Can I show my answer? Um yeah, when we when we get there, when we get to Are we done? Anyone still need more time? Okay. Silence means you are all done. So we need to take that uh, probability of the mean less than 10, 000, uh, 1050 and standardize it. So I'm just going to use the same formula. And you guys, you need to tell me what you did. So give me the values. What is our mean? Sample mean? It's 1,050. 1,000. And our population mean? It's 1,000. Divide by our standard error. It's 200. 200 for the population standard deviation. Divide by the square root of 16. Divide by the square root of 16. Mm. 
1050 minus 1000 gives us 50. 50 divided by our standard error is how much? It's 50 divided by 50. That is 200 divided by a uh, square root of 16 is 200 divided by 4. That is 50 and then it's 50 divided by 50. So that would be 50 divided by 50. So the standard error is 50. And we need to go find the probability that Z is less than 50 divided by 50 is 1, mm -hmm. 0, 0. So we're looking for the probability of a less than. 1,00, so you need to go to the positive side, correct? So we need to go to the positive side of the table, and we need to go to where it is 1, on because we're looking for 1,00. Zero, zero. Uh, zero. So, so. 1 comma 0 and 0 at the top and the answer is 0 comma 8413 our answer is number 2 let's see i see the options that you have um la lady if you went wrong Lungile, uh, I didn't go to the table. <laughs> go to the table. Just pay attention. They are not looking for the Z. The minute they ask you to find the probability, you must always make sure that you go to the table. So you need to always. Yes. I'm not sure how you did it, Sla Lady, where you got zero comma five three nine eight. But I hope you know where you went wrong. And Not exactly. Um, can you please just show me the, the table again? So the table is the cumulative standardized normal distribution. You need to look for 1,0. Oh, I see you went to 0, 0,1. You need to go to one. Remember, the digit before the comma is one. So you need to go one, and then the digit after comma is zero. You need to go to zero, one comma zero, and zero at the top. The last digit, zero, and that is that. So I can see you used that. Yeah, thing. that's exactly what I did. I used the yeah. wrong um, value before the comma. Yes. So you need to pay attention to your values, right? Otherwise, you did you do understand how to use the table? Just pay attention to the decimals and the, the values. All right, let's continue. Now let's look at how we do for the proportion. So far, we've learned the sampling distribution for the mean. How do I know which one I'm working with? As long as they mention the mean, the standard deviation, you must know that you were working with sampling distribution uh, sampling distribution of the mean. And to know that, it's if they give you things like the mean, the standard deviation, you should know that. Because you can also find the, sam the sampling distribution for the population proportions. And with the population proportion, we use the pi, which we, we used in the binomial distribution as our probability of success. Here we use it and we call it the proportion. Population proportion. For sample proportion, we use, uh, or it's denoted by a P. Remember always, for the 
population, we always use the Greek letters. For the sample, we always use the English letters that we always know, like the small letters, like P's and the X and the N. With the proportion or parameters, we use the Greek letters like mu, sigma, uh, pi, which is one of those. So, for example, sometimes when we calculate the sampling distribution of our proportion, they might not give us the sample proportion, but they might give us the observation satisfying that sampling proportion or the sample size. And when they give us those observations that satisfy that uh, sample, we can calculate the sample proportion because we're going to take the sample or the observation and divide them by the sample mean in order for us to calculate the sampling or the sample proportion. And always remember that your probability should always be between zero and one. The same thing that goes with the sample proportion, it's always going to be between zero and one. And with this, we always assume that the, when we do this sampling distribution as well, as well as with the mean, we always resume as, or assume that the sampling that is being done is with replacement or without replacement. With replace it, replacement, it means when we take out one, we, we, we use the, the we, we create the first sample and then we take them back. And then we go and resample again, and then we take them back. And then we resample again, and we take them back. When we do without replacement, when we take out the first sample, we don't have to re re replace everything that we took out. So we are left with whatever we are left with. And then we go back and we select another sample from that we what we left with. So it's different. So with replacement, it means if I have all these dots, if I take this dot out and that dot out and I create a sample, I must take them back. I must take them back and then recreate another sample and that can be out and that can be out. And then I must take them back and create another sample. Without replacement, if I have those dots, if I take out this one and I take out that one, I've taken them out. I don't have to replace them again. So they are gone from the sample. So it means they are gone for the next sample. Then when I create another sample, I just select that one and then select that one. Then they will be gone out. I cannot reselect them again. But with this one, I must put them back because they can be eligible for being selected again and again and again and again and again because I'm replacing them again. And that is without and with um without or with replacement. And that's what it means. It means the samples that we create, they can either be without or with replacement. Okay, similar to what we did with the sample mean, sampling distribution as well, we can approximate it to a normal distribution when our Sample size multiplying by the population proportion should be greater than five. And our sample size times one minus the population proportion should also be greater than five. Our sampling distribution is distributed with the mean of the sampling distribution of the proportion, which is the equals to our population proportion of sampling distribution, which is the same as the pi, and our standard error, which is our standard deviation of our sampling distribution of our proportion. It's given by the square root of your population proportion times one minus the population proportion divided by n. For sampling distribution, the mean of a sampling distribution is the same as the pi, which is the population proportion. The mean of a sampling distribution is the same as 
the population proportion, which is the pi, the mean of a sampling distribution is the same as the population proportion. The standard deviation of a sampling distribution, which is also called the standard error of the sampling distribution, is given by the square root of your population proportion times 1 minus the population proportion divided by the sample size. Let's look at an example. From the past knowledge, Africa Check knows that the true proportion of ghost profiles on, ghost, on, on Facebook is 0 0.2. So there we are given our population proportion. Suppose that we take a sample of 200, which is our N Facebook profiles, and we found that only 34, which is our X, because this is from our sample of 200, we found that our only 34 of the ghost are uh, ghost profiles. What is the value of your population proportion? The population proportion is given in the question. Our population proportion is 0 0.2. Mm. What is the value of our sample proportion? Remember, if we are not given the sample proportion, but we are given the observations that satisfies that sample divided by n will give us the sample proportion. So what is the population the sample proportion? Our observations, they are 34. 34. Our sample size. 200. 200. 200. So 34 divided by 200 is how much? 0 0.17. 0 0.17. So population proportion, yes, it's correct. No, it's not correct. Not correct, not correct. This is the value for the sample proportion. This is the value for the population proportion. Population proportion is 0 0.2, correct. Sample proportion is 0 0.17, correct. That's not correct. That's not correct. Option number four is the answer you were looking for. Any questions? If there are no questions, then let's look at how we calculate the Z score and go find the probability on the table. So with the proportions, okay, with the proportions to standardize the value of our sample proportion, we use the Z value formula, which is our sample proportion minus the population proportion divided by the standard error. And we know our standard error is the square root of our population proportion times one minus the population proportion divided by n. This is for the proportions. If the population proportion is 0 0.4, our n is 200, what is the probability that our sample proportion lies between 0 0.4 and 0 0.45. So we can go and find this probability. So I'm going to use the z-score without using the probability of between between. We can substitute them later in the formula uh, because I'm going to run out of space if I do that. So I'm going to first calculate the z for the first one. We know that we use P minus the population proportion divided by the standard error, which is the population proportion, one minus the population proportion divided by N. And I calculate for the first one, our sample proportion is 0, 0,40 because it's given in the question. 
our population proportion was given in the statement, which is 0 0,4. Divide by the square root of 0 0,4 times 1 minus 0 0,4. Divide by our n, 200 equals 0, 0,4, 0 minus 0, 0,4 is 0 divided by the other value, which I'm not going to even bother doing because I know 0, 0,4 minus 0, 0,4, any value divided by 0 will just be 0. So I'm just going to leave it as 0, 0,00. Then we do the second one. We'll do the second one. Z equals our P minus the population proportion divided by the square root of our population proportion. One minus the population proportion divided by N. 0, 0,45 is our P because it's given in the question. Minus 0, 0,4 divide by our standard error, which is 0, 0,4 times 1 minus 0, 0,4 divided by 200. So now I need your help because on the first one, I could have went and calculated the standard error, but I was so lazy because I know that the first one is 0. So any number divided by 0 will just be 0. So on this one, we will need to calculate it together. 0, 0,45 minus 0, 0,4. The answer here will be 0, 0,05. 0, 0, 0,05. So please go and calculate for me the standard error. So this will be 0, 0,4 times 0, 0,6 divided by oh, divide by 200. So if you quickly do that calculation for me and then take the square root of the answer. Zero point zero three four. Zero point zero three four. Three four. Yes. Okay. Then divide zero comma zero five with zero comma zero three four. Is 0, 0,034 the answer for the whole thing, or are you? No, no, it's the only no, one. Okay. So do the 0, 0,05 divided by 0, 0,034. It's 1,470. Ah, you guys, I'm going to rely on my slide now. 0, 0,034, yes, okay. So that is 1, 470. So we leave it to two decimals. So it's just, com just gonna be 1, 470. Uh, now let's calculate the probability. So we know what we need to be calculating here. So we need to find the probability of Z. Oh, Z lies between two values. It lies between 0, 0, 0,00 and 1,47. So we need to go find the probability that Z is less than 1,47 on the positive side and we also need to go find the probability that z is less than 0, 0,00 on the positive side so let's go to the table i'm gonna keep go to the table we're looking on the positive side for two values, 1,47 and 0, 0,00. 0, 0,00 is 0, 0,500. We need 
one comma four. And we need to go find seven, which is zero comma nine two nine two. Okay, zero comma nine two nine two minus zero comma five zero zero, and that gives us zero comma four two nine two. And that is how you go find the probability mm. on the table. Sorry, Lizzie. Lizzie. Yes. Can you please go back to the table, uh, find that value again? I just want to see something. So. Mm. 1 comma 4 7 1 comma 4 on the yes. side and at the top we go look for 7 okay thank you so much and for like this zero, it's 0 and a 0 thank you Lizzie. Okay, so we calculated the standard error and then we calculated the probability and we did find that it is. So you guys, you told me it was 0, 0,147, it's 1,44. So depending on how many decimals you kept. So always keep it to four decimals. Don't round off quickly because you see when you round off quickly, you're adding up uh, values as well. Um, so please pay attention to how you round off. So do not round off while, that's the golden rule. The golden rule for doing math is while you're still in the problem mode, you do not round off. You only round off when you get to the final answer. So we rounded off the, uh, the standard error to 0, 0,34 actually it should have been 0, 0,35 so you said it's 0, 0,34 so you also didn't round it correctly so because we are rounding off quick, too quickly we're adding up the the digits at the end and that is why the answer we got there was 47 instead of 144 and this is what is going to happen in your uh, exam or your assignment while you are busy Always, if you want to shorten the value you see on your calculator, keep it to four decimals or five decimals. They should be enough to cover the, 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 the loss of uh, the last digits every time or the incrementals of the last digits. Okay. And that concludes what you needed to learn about the sampling distribution. Uh, in the next couple of minutes that are uh, the next couple of hours that we have, we're going to do a lot of other exercises that talks to the sampling distribution as well. And then, like, I've sent you guys a, uh, a note, an announcement via my UNISA. So next week, Wednesday, there's no class because it's a public holiday. The following week, can which is saturday next week saturday we are going to repeat um chapter six and chapter seven activities so that we can be well acquainted with the two chapters before you do your assignment three because it's due on the 30th we still have enough time so that you can do lots of practice before you submit your assignment three so we will discuss the activities on saturday Okay, do you have any question, any query before we start with lots of exercise? But before you, your queries and questions, let's answer this question. And then I think after this, we can start with the, the questions just to familiarize ourselves again with the proportion. So now, remember with the mean, with the sampling distribution of the mean, remember that 
the key thing that you need to remember when you see or when you read the question is things like the mean, the standard deviation. Say, with the sampling distribution for the proportion, the key thing here will be they will tell you proportion, they might give you decimal or they might give you percentages. So you need to know those things. They will not mention the mean or the standard deviation. So you need to automatically know that this is a sampling distribution of the mean, uh, sorry, of the proportion. So for example, here from the past knowledge Africa check shows that the true proportion of ghost profiles on Facebook is 0 0.2, the sample size is 200, and the and they found that only 34 are ghost profile. If the population proportion is 0 0.2, the sample proportion is 0 0.17, what is the probability of that? Sample proportion being greater than or at least 0 0.7. So they're asking you to find the probability that Z is greater than the sample mean minus the mean divided by the standard. No, they are not asking you that. Why? Because this is for the sample mean. They are asking you to find the sample proportion minus the population proportion divided by the standard error, which is your population proportion, one minus the population proportion divided by n. You need to know the formula as well, which one to use for which question, whether for the mean or for the proportion. And that is your exercise. You have five minutes. We did calculate the proportion. Yes. And here they've given it to you. So find the probability that it is greater than 0 0.17. Your five minutes start now. Remember, those who are done, you can post your answer on the chat.
Okay, how are we doing? Are we done? Okay, so let's work it out. <clears throat> what is the probability? The proportion will be? So I got option one, zero, zero comma eight five five four. Yeah, but let's work it out. Our okay. P is zero comma one seven minus our population proportion we were given zero point two zero point two point two divided by our standard error, which is the square root of our population proportion, which is zero point two times one minus. 0 0.2 divided by our n 200. Zero point one three or oh, sorry, zero point one seven minus zero point two. So minus zero point zero three. Our standard error. Zero point zero two eight two eight four. Zero point zero two eight two eight four. Did I write it correctly? It's zero point two. There's no zero after the other zero after the comma. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Is it zero point zero point two eight two eight four? No, zero point zero two eight two eight four. Did you guys calculate this? Others, do you agree with Lalit? Yes, Mr. Okay. Zero point two eight two eight four. Okay, correct. If you all agree, then we can move. So, what is the answer? Minus zero comma zero three divided by zero comma zero two eight two three four is. One point zero six three eight minus one point point zero six three eight. Am I right? Let me double check something. Sorry, Lizzie, I want to check. Okay. Zero point those who got the answer, someone gave me the answer and they said it's 0, 0.8554. What was your Z value? Mine was 1,06066. Okay, we just need to round that off, but yeah. What happened to the so minus? It's, it's minus 1.0606. Is it one round it off to two decimal? J give me only two decimal. Yes, that's right. Zero. Yes. Two point zero six zero 
minus 1.06. Okay. So if we go to the table, we must remember that. Uh, why did I turn the sign? The sign must be greater than. Yeah, I was actually about to ask, <laughs> but okay. The sign must be greater than, so we must go find the value on the table and say one minus the value we're going to find on the table under the Z of less than minus 1,06. That will be the value. So let's go to the table. We're going to the negative side. And we're looking for minus. 1,06, that's what you told me. 1,0. And I must go to the top to look for where 6 is. 6 is in this column. So where they both meet. Come on. Uh, zero comma one four four six. Therefore, the answer here we find will be one minus zero comma. I forgot the number. Four four six. One four four six. One four four six. And when you calculate this, what do you get? Is that the answer? Yes, 0 0.8554. And that's how you will find the probability of the sample proportion greater than 0 0.16. OK, let's fit in yes. one more exercise. Um, any questions? Nope. Okay. We will do a couple of exercises. We have 30 minutes. Some, uh, the standard deviation of a sampling distribution of the mean is called, is it called sampling mean? Is it called residual? Is it called standard error? Is it called standard normal? Is it called sum of deviation? What is the standard deviation of sampling? Isn't it the standard error, Ms. Luz? It is indeed the standard error. Let's go through each statement and choose the one that is incorrect. The mean of a sampling distribution of the mean equal to the population mean. Correct. The mean of a population distribution is the same as the population mean. That is correct. The Z score of a sampling distribution of the mean is equal to the difference between the sample mean and the population mean divided by the standard error, divided by the square root of the sample size. If I rewrite this, it says our Z is the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error, divided by the square root of N. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Is that correct? Because standard error, remember what the standard error is, is the population divided by the square root of n. So are you telling me that this, what they are saying is the mean minus the mean divided by population divided by the square root of n divided by the square root of n. That's what they are saying. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. 
because the standard error, remember the standard error is the value underneath the A, is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of N, which is our standard error for the Z formula. Statement uh -huh. number two says, the Z value is the mean <coughs> minus the mean, the sample mean minus the mean divided by the standard <coughs> error divided by the square root of N, which means they are saying is the sample mean minus the population mean divided by this population standard deviation divided by the square root of N divided by the square root of N. That's what they are saying. That is incorrect. That is That's incorrect. incorrect. <clears throat> the next one, it says, the standard deviation of a sampling mean is equal to the standard deviation of the standard of the population divided by the square root of n. So what they are saying, the standard deviation of a sampling distribution of mean is the same as the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Is that correct? Correct. That is cool. correct. Number four, a sampling error is the error resulting from using a sample characteristics to estimate the population characteristic. Is that correct? I'm not sure. From chapter one, what did we learn? There are two types of statistics. There is one where we we use descriptive and where we use the uh, inferential. And we also learned that we use statistics to estimate the parameter, isn't it? As oh. Sampling error is one of the values we use because this comes from a sampling distribution. Remember that it's all the samples, 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 samples. The standard error from there will be the error resulting from our statistics, which are our sample characteristics to estimate their population parameter, which is our population parameter, whichever, which, whichever one we use, whether we use the population uh, proportion or we use the population mean. So this is also correct. So this goes back to, if you still remember what you've learned in your mm -hmm. chapter one, you still can apply that concept here. Number five, regardless of the shape of the distribution, the sample size gets larger enough the sampling distribution of the mean is approximately normally distributed. So regardless, if we have a uniform distribution, if we increase and we create lots and lots of sample sizes, we can approximate that to a normal distribution. Is that correct? We've learned this just a couple of minutes yeah. ago. Yeah, yes, how, yes, how yes that's correct. correct. That's correct. The only thing that is incorrect is number two. That is your exercise. Suppose Africa Chef conducted first research using a sample size, which means our N is 100. The number of times an AI algorithm is successful at detecting fake news is normally distributed with the mean of 900. And the standard deviation of 100, let x be or x bar be the number of times the algorithm is successful 
detecting the fake news. What is the mean of the sampling distribution of the mean? I think the answer is in the question, 900. The answer is 900 because we know that the mean of a sampling distribution is the same as the mean of the population, which is the same as 900. Number four. Same. Asking what is the standard error? They are asking you to find the standard error. And I'm just going to give you the formula for the standard error. What is the standard error of the mean? It's 100, the same as standard deviation. Nope. It's not the same as the standard deviation. You have the formula there. Did you calculate? Remember that your standard error of the mean is your population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Is it number four? Ten. Okay, I've got two answers. Let's calculate. What is our standard deviation? Ten. 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 Hundred. The square root of hundred. 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 So this will be hundred divided by ten. Ten. Or is it hundred divided by hundred? So which is equals to? Ten, which is option Three. you must you must use your calculators guys you must calculate when they ask you the standard error you need to know that it is your population standard deviation divided by the square root of n and you must substitute the correct values and do the right calculations okay now calculate the probability that the mean is less than 920. So you need to find the probability that Z is less than your mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error. You, you've calculated the standard error of this question. It's here. So you can just substitute the values. So we can just say the probability that we're looking for Z less than our sample mean is always asked in the question, which is 920 minus our population mean, which is 900 divided by our standard error, we've calculated it. I'm not going to mm -hmm. substitute the values again. I'm just going to put the 10 and do the calculations. Mm -hmm. Which is 20 divided by 10, which will be Z alpha. What is 20 divided by 10? Mm -hmm. Two will be 2,00 and then you go to the table and go find 2,00. Go to the table, go to the positive side of the table. And we look for 2. And what is the answer? 0.9772. And it means it's none of this. And the answer here is 
that's what happens with yeah. copy paste. The probability is zero point nine seven seven two. And that should be your last, 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 last exercise that you do, actually. Let's not do that one. Let's do this exercise seven. In a random sample of 100 people, 25 are classified as a meeting, as meet, you know, classified as meeting a characteristics of interest. That is success. Suppose the proportion of success is known to be 0 0.3. What are you given? Let's first identify what you are given. What is 100? N. 100 is N. What is 25? X. 25 is X. What is 0 0.3? Pi. Population proportion. So based on what you know that you are given, we know that this is the population proportion question because it's also guided by those keywords that you can use. There is no mean, there's no standard deviation. The question says, what is the sample proportion? Sample proportion, X divided by N, you just need to calculate that. The next one, it says, what is the standard error? Your standard error for the proportions, the square root of your population proportion, one minus the population proportion, divided by n. number uh, it's option four Okay, so let's do this. Our sample proportion, X is 25. Divide by our N. 25 divided by 100. 0 0.25. 0 0.25. Sampling. Uh, the standard error is 0 0.3 of our population proportion is 0 0.3 times 1 minus 0 0.3 divided by 100. 100. And the answer we get is 0 0.0458. 0 0.4.
zero point zero four five eight. Happy? Yes. Okay. So you have additional exercise that you can do on your own. Uh, remember, we didn't cover exercise six, so you must do exercise six, exercise eight, exercise nine, exercise 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. on your own and then next on next week saturday we can also do some of those activities as well in class i will add them to the pack of activities that we will do next week the first hour we will ded dedicate it to chapter six and then the next hour we'll dedicate it to chapter seven just to recap on what we did today, so you've learned the sampling distribution, you've learned how to calculate the probability of a sampling distribution for the mean when you are given the mean, the standard deviation and the sample size, and you're also <clears throat> able to calculate the probability of a sampling distribution when uh, of a proportion when you're given the uh, population proportion and the sample size and the sample proportion and in case where you are not given the sample proportion you are given the observations that satisfy that sample proportion and you can calculate the sample proportion and we've learned how to look for the probabilities on the table with that it concludes today's session any question how you feeling any comment that you want to share with the rest of the class Yo, Miss Liz, I keep forgetting the square root and it's giving me wrong answers. Guys, please don't do what I'm doing. Heads up. Thank you. That's a good advice. Um, just to just to comment, um, yes. I think initially when you had mentioned that we are changing um, uniform distribution to standard to, to to standardize it, um, initially it looked like perhaps we're cooking the books, but I think now I'm getting the idea that actually what we're doing is we are looking closer into the data that's presented to us, and then give and then change it into a form that's easier to understand is that a correct way of thinking um not necessarily it, we convert it to a form that we can make conclusions about the information because you cannot interpret a standardized value uh, you can interpret it but i mean like when we talk about the z score of Minus one point uh, one point one point five, or let's say that. Then we're talking about how um, the difference. We're talking about how far apart uh, the values are to one another in terms of the z score. Um, we're talking about the average of those values. So because we're standardizing it, it's not in the original value. Uh, but it is in a standardized form. So yeah, so we're not we're not also actually cooking the books. We converting them in order for us to be able to make conclusion about that information. Because usually you cannot you when you are when you have the sample values. Remember you you selected them from a population, and whatever calculations that you do and whatever conclusion that you want to reach at. If your data is not normally distribution, you cannot infer your results back to the population. You cannot make a generalized statement about the population. So mm -hmm. only when your data is normally distributed, you are able to generalize your, your conclusion back to the population where you selected the information from. Ah, and okay. what we are doing. We're trying okay. to make sure that whatever the conclusion that you will reach using the values that you have, you can generalize it back to the original population. Population, okay. okay. Yeah. 
All right, thank you, ma'am. No worries. Okay, and that concludes today's session. Um, you can have a lovely weekend. I will stop the recording and see you on Saturday.